Mr. Peterle, thank you so much for this interview. The Parliament baked temporary emergency rules to relocate an initial total of 40,000 asylum seekers from Italy and Greece to other EU member states over two years. First of all, please share with us some details. First of all, I would like to say that it is important that uh, we were able to agree what to do. Uh, we have to follow uh, rules. Uh, we may not allow, uh, allow a chaotic situation. And I think that this is uh, finally an added, an added value. We have to be human. Uh, we have to express our solidarity to the people in need, but also to those countries uh, which uh, have been affected most uh, by the uh, by the migrations. Uh, so I think that this was uh, a just uh, solution, uh, and uh, uh, for me this was a very important decision. You are coming from Slovenia. How many refugees has up to now Slovenia received, and how is the country uh, handling this situation? Uh, I don't know exact uh, figures uh, of the day, but uh, uh, it is important that the government uh, uh, assures uh, uh, that uh, it is ready uh, to accept uh, uh, refugees. Uh, so far we, we didn't have uh, a, a very strong inflow because uh, uh, there are uh, other ways. Uh, refugees go more to, to Hungary or more to Italy than, than to Slovenia, but the situation could change uh, in, in one day. Uh, so, so far, uh, we, we are obliged uh, to accept uh, um, around 900 uh, refugees. Uh, the figures uh, uh, are today different than, than at the beginning because the burden is higher. Uh, so, we have uh, our own experience with refugees uh, 25 or 23 years ago uh, when there was a Balkan uh, refugee wars. crisis uh, and uh, there were wars. Uh, uh, so um, I, uh, I would like to believe our government that uh, they are ready to accept refugees. Um, a lot of ideas are uh, flowing uh, in the air these days. In the air these days, how this crisis should be handled, how uh, EU should cope with this. And uh, former MEP Daniel uh, Cohn Bendit has proposed that EP building, this building in Strasbourg, should become a refugee reception center. How can we uh, assess such an idea? <laughs> I know Daniel well, uh, he was my colleague for two mandates. Uh, uh, I know him even from 68, uh, because I belong to the same generation. The student I think, movement. Uh, student movement. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's a provocative idea. Uh, I don't think it is shared by, by French citizens. Uh, 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 and I don't think that uh, this building is, is very appropriate uh, for, for, for the refugees uh, uh, and I, I'm sure that France will, will find uh, appropriate places uh, for its share of the burden. If we are to make a comparison between this refugee crisis and the refugee crisis back in the 90s uh, when the uh, Balkan wars were um, developed, how can we make this comparison? Are there similarities? Are there differences? There are some similarities, but there are also differences. Of course, there were wars uh, in the former Yugoslavia. The first war uh, uh, happened in, in my country, in Slovenia. Then it moves to Croatia, and then to Bosnia, and so on. Uh, um, but I think that the situation today, uh, especially in Syria and Iraq, is, uh, is so the volume is, the volume is different. Um, and the situation is, is uh, more, I would say, it's, it, it's more cruel. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I think that um, people uh, from former Yugoslav republics, uh, which were affected by wars, uh, uh, I think many of them were able to return. Uh, I, um, I see different situation now uh, in Syria and, and Iraq. I think we will need a lot of time to normalize the situation. Uh, and of course, we have to, 
to strengthen our efforts in order to finish with the conflict, with, with the roots of the, uh, of the problem in the, in the countries of the origin. And uh, this is why uh, the President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, asked for a diplomatic uh, European uh, offensive. Uh, I'll get back to the relocation rules just adopted by the European Parliament. According to them, permanent emergency relocation scheme must be based on, and I will quote, a more substantial contribution to solidarity and responsibility sharing among member states, including a significant increase in the number of available relocation places. It should be uh, built on clearly defined criteria allowing it to be triggered. What kind of criteria? So this is, uh, this is the challenge for the decision makers. Uh, uh, I think the cran uh, criteria uh, have to be very, very, very clear. Uh, I can't uh, speak uh, very much in, in details, uh, uh, but uh, it is sure that uh, we need clear criteria, that we need uh, transparent procedures, and that we need that rules are respected uh, uh, um, uh, by all participating uh, countries, by, by the member states. Uh, as I said, we need a just solution, we need, we need solidarity. We know that some countries are more, more affected, uh, and uh, there is no idea that, uh, that this uh, um, the problem should land uh, only in one or only in two countries. Uh, I think that uh, this day in the European Parliament uh, 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 has brought, uh, I would say, better awareness uh, uh, and more readiness uh, to act together. Here within the European Parliament, as you just um, uh, mentioned, but in the Council, the, the things are not the same in the Parliament. Um, the management of the refugees flows uh, requires money, and the Council has just proposed cuts for the 2016 budget. And your group, the EPP group, said that these cuts will affect also refugees, will affect also migration. So the problem is that uh, some European countries, uh, members of the European Union, are facing their own uh, major problems uh, with uh, unemployment, with uh, weak economic growth, uh, with uh, the differences uh, in developments in, uh, among their regions. Uh, and it is not that easy for them uh, to accept uh, a bigger number of refugees uh, because they are also financially uh, limited. Uh, so, but I, I do hope that uh, uh, also Council uh, in the future will be able to, uh, to decide uh, in a faster way uh, and again, I would say to be just uh, with their solutions for the for the member states, we need uh, a coordinated action of the European institutions. Uh, and um, as today rightly pointed out, uh, Mr. Juncker, in our European history, he said, <laughs> uh, so many people were refugees uh, because of different wars and uh, occupations and, and, and so on. So um, I think that we, we have to combine humanity, uh, respect for human dignity, uh, with solidarity, but also with, with our means. So we are not able to accept uh, a huge number of refugees, uh, especially not in, in, some, in some member states. Uh, and we have to be attentive also to the, as we sometimes say, to the absorption capacity, how, how much we can, we can accept. Because you mentioned Mr. Juncker, um, he mentioned today a very interesting point of view regarding um, regarding refugees, th this uh, th uh, topic. Uh, many are seeing this influx of refugees only as a crisis, uh, but Mr. Juncker said that this is also an opportunity for the European Union. And I will quote, he said today, we are an aging continent, migration must change uh, from a problem to a well-managed resource. He added also that the asylum seekers should be allowed uh, to work while awaiting the completion of their asylum process. Do you share the same point of view? I can agree with, with, with the last point. Uh, 
Uh, of course, if there is work and if people are willing to work, uh, I would say, uh, I wouldn't say, I, I, I would say, don't be bureaucratic. Uh, if there is a possibility to employ people, uh, uh, and there are areas or countries in the European Union which can offer uh, working places, I would say, why, why not? But uh, we had this week also debate on the active aging and of the demographic uh, structure of Europe, which is not very much uh, optimistic. Uh, optimistic or encouraging. Uh, and uh, I, in my comment, uh, I asked also, uh, while dealing with the active aging, also <laughs> to deal with active rejuvenation of the European Union. I, I, I don't think that we that is wise uh, uh, from many aspects uh, uh, to count only on uh, migration uh, uh, inflow with, uh, with young or younger, younger people. Uh, I think we should count also on our own uh, demographic strength, let's say so. Uh, and uh, I wish that also young Europeans uh, have a better future in the European Union uh, as this is the uh, hope of the refugees today. Mr. Peterle, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. Bye-bye.